do you see batteries disrupting the current power markets, the current power monopolies? Well, I think batteries have come about in the last few years as really an alternate to some of the power plants that we would have otherwise built. Um, often we're building power plants for the reliability of the grid, and today uh, we have the opportunity to put a battery system in places for that same reliability, flexibility uh, that Logan was talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, and this is a perfect complement to the kinds of renewable generation that is, is really the main driver of, of new energy. Michael, how big a driver is transportation in terms of driving battery development and growth? So I, I'd say uh, certainly EVs, electrification of uh, transportation, is the largest driver of batteries today. I think China uh, over the next every year is, uh, is consuming about 18 gigawatt hours of batteries just for buses. Uh, and they are transitioning, I think, all of their bus fleets to zero emission technologies, uh, electrifying their platforms, which kind of produces an energy agnostic platform that can use solar energy, wind air energy, coal energy, whatever the electron th they need um, is adaptable. So as they clean up their, uh, their technology, the, adapt the adaptable technology immediately uses to do energy. So China's driving that with electrification, and China today, I think, t is produced in the first quarter more, uh, over, the, over the, the time of production, more EVs than all of the nations put together. So they're driving these chemistries, uh, scale, manufacturing components, and spend, leverage, all through, uh, through their electrified vehicles, their vehicle technology. I John, who are the biggest losers in the onslaught of batteries? Uh, well, I don't know that it's so much the losers of it. I think it's just the fact that we have an electrical infrastructure that we have to continue to invest in. Electricity is very fundamental to uh, economic growth everywhere in the globe. As assets age out, old power plants, old transmission lines, and things have to be replaced, what we're finding is batteries in large format systems are just a better way to rebuild that infrastructure. So we're finding batteries that go on the grid and substitute in some cases for jobs we did with transmission lines. In other cases, they substitute for jobs we did with power generators. But in all cases, they're really complementing the grid. They're making it cheaper, they're making it more reliable, and they're making it cleaner. Michael, it's not all smooth sailing ahead, though. I mean, there are some things about batteries that I understand keep you up at night. What are they? Uh, well, certainly the, if you select the wrong chemistry, there are certain chemistries that are very high energy density, but also uh, susceptible to thermal runaway. And um, certainly it keeps me up at night. Uh, if, if, the, if the industry doesn't select the correct chemistry, we could have uh, landfill nightmares in the future when we're trying to uh, uh, recycle these batteries. Um, that, that keeps me up at night. The other thing that I think really worries me is almost this tyranny of the embedded base. Uh, I do believe we're displacing industries, entire industries. Uh, the internal combustion engine technologies, uh, I believe, will be in the past. Electrified transportation is more reliable, it's more sustainable, uh, it's adaptable. And so uh, we will see uh, a lot of disruption uh, as electrified vehicles uh, gain more market share. Logan, that sounds a little scary. Sca scary or exciting, mm -hmm. depending which perspective you're coming from. How would you characterize the way Tesla fits in here and what Elon Musk is trying to do? How revolutionary is it? Or not. <laughs> I, I think if we if we look at Tesla um, as a battery manufacturer, sort of here in the United States, it currently has around 18, 19 gigawatt hours of commission capacity of a gigafactory. Now that puts it sort of on par with any battery manufacturer in the world at the moment, and it has plans to increase that over the next few years to 105 gigawatt hours a year um, of production capacity. Once again, here here in the U.S. So. That, that scale is almost unparalleled, but it's, it's part of a general rush from leading manufacturers, whether they're from China, Korea, Japan, or the US, um, to sort of cement their positions here. So Tesla is at the forefront, but it's not alone. John, you know, uh, being, you know, from, uh, you know, an industry that is uh, being disrupted again and again, what do you think are the main trends that are gonna shape how batteries grow and develop over the next few decades? 
Well, we've been in this for a little while. So we started our efforts in battery uh, energy storage on the grid about 10 years ago, and most recently just formed this joint venture affluence with Siemens and AES to take this really farther into the next level. Uh, today, we've already deployed battery systems in 16 countries around the globe. We've got some of the largest systems existing in places like Arizona, California, Hawaii, New York coming online, but other places as well, uh, the United Kingdom, Australia, uh, Japan, around the world. So I think we're recognizing the fact that uh, storage is here. It's supplied in a quantity that can replace uh, some of the traditional solutions like power plants, and it's fitting a lot of our policy goals. Um, it's cleaner, it's more compact, it fits in urban areas uh, where we can't build power plants today and it allows our grids to be uh, flexible and take the best advantage of the renewables that, that are being built all over. So, Michael, when will my home and my car be run on batteries and every home and car? Is that, is that well, in the future? Uh, I, it's certainly in the future. It's one of the only sustainable uh, solutions. You know, you, if we're looking at true zero emission technologies or a, a zero emission ecosystem where you start with renewable power, and you make it relevant, firm and dispatchable to the grid. You use environmentally friendly batteries, like we were talking about, to balance and then dispatch that power and then responsibly use that power for electrified transportation or LED lighting systems in homes. That, that ecosystem, I believe, is the only sustainable ecosystem in the future. We, we can't depend on finite fuels that pollute our air and, and our water. We're gonna have to turn more and more to renewable power uh, to, to be relevant. Companies that will select those will stay relevant in the future.